So a lot of people ask, what does a duck guide do? Well, today on Surviving Duck Season, I'm gonna take you on a little bit of a day in the life of what I do, and we're gonna be kind of doing some of that uh, over the next several weeks during duck season in Arkansas. I know you guys are gonna like it. It's gonna be interesting. It's gonna let you know about things, how we do them a little bit differently here around the Stuttgart area. And that's what we're gonna be doing this time on Surviving Duck Season. Surviving Duck Season, offering you the best waterfowl content. Subscribe to this channel, click the notification bell, and don't miss any of our great content. Presented by Mojo Outdoors at High and Dry. So my day starts off at 4 a.m. Uh, that's when my alarm goes off. I get ready to leave and then I head over to the shop where I meet Scott and the other guides to start preparing for the morning. Uh, that's when we make our last minute decisions on which blind we go to. We know what the wind's gonna be doing for that morning. And so then we can decide for sure this is where we're gonna go. Then we load up um, our vehicles with the appropriate gear that we're gonna need for the day. And we head over to the lodge to pick up our hunters. All of our hunters boot up. We put our waders on before we leave. So we're able to, you know, drive to the location we're gonna hunt, uh, get out of the trucks and get on the ranger or the boat or whatever the situation's gonna be. And then, you know, head right out. We don't have to put our, our waders on once we get out of the truck. Then we head to our hunting location. Sometimes it involves a four wheeler ride, a ranger ride, a boat ride. All right guys, y'all just watch your step as you get in the blind over there. I'm gonna start putting out decoys. Of course, as a guide, I'm gonna be calling the ducks and as well as calling the shot. And really calling the shot is probably the most critical part of the whole deal because you can get those birds in close, but if you don't call the shot at the right time, you're not giving your hunters the optimum chance of being able to shoot the ducks. And so we have to anticipate the birds, you know, being in the position to being shot, you know, and getting the guys out of the blind quick enough so that they can get, you know, pull the shot off. My retriever that I'm hunting with is Indy. Uh, she's a five-year-old yellow lab and she's done absolutely fantastic for me. Uh, every dog that I've gotten has been so good. I've loved them so much, but every one is, that I get is better than the last one that I got. Um, she's got a great personality. Beautiful. Beautiful. Big old fat in the head. As Indy brings me back the ducks, I have individual uh, duck straps for each hunter. That way I can keep them separated. We know who shoots what, and uh, we can keep up with the limit, and it's legal. So this morning, we're going to the woods. I'm super excited. I love hunting in the flooded timber. Uh, this morning, the conditions should be just right. Uh, we've got clear skies. Uh, I can see all the stars out there. We just got barely a little sliver of the moon. And uh, the wind's coming out of the north about 10 miles an hour. So it really should be fantastic conditions today. Uh, we haven't really hunted in, in this block of woods this year yet. So uh, we just kind of went on a little exploratory mission a few days ago. So today should be really good. Indy. Huh? 
Now, a lot of guys ask me, do I ever get to hunt on my own just for the fun of it? Well, today is just a couple of days before Christmas. We didn't have anybody booked in at the lodge to hunt this morning. So today is just a buddy hunt, including friends and family from the lodge. It's in the tree? Oh, heck. I, my dog can't climb trees. You hear me? <laughs> I know. <laughs> we have a duck. It's in the tree. It's in the tree. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, it's right, 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 right. Yeah. I don't know. Right there. Right, right there. Right. Yeah, see it in the tree. A little bit of, uh, there you there go. It That's not loose. That's funny. Yeah, that's nuts, isn't it? Ducks, ducks, ducks. Kill them. Well, we're trying to get the duck out of the tree. We'll shoot some ducks while we're trying to get a duck out of the tree. All right, Nindy, good. Here. Okay. That's funny. So what's the plan there, Scott? Well, I'm going to shake the tree first. Okay. If that didn't work, I'm gonna try to shoot that limb off right there. Hmm. Below the duck. Below the duck. Alright then. I saw my dad waste a half a box of shells on the buck right there. And then the duck probably wouldn't fit to eat. <laughs> <laughs> well you just 
shot a wing off. <laughs> That's how you get a duck out of a tree. <laughs> Come on. Sit right there. Good. Right. Come here. Right. Good girl. Every day after the hunt, we gather up the birds, make sure they're all tagged properly, and then we take them to a commercial processor. What we do is we have these carts printed up that uh, for our place and. They've got all the different kinds of ducks that you can shoot. So we mark down this, this one's got five ducks on it and shows what kind of ducks we got. So we take them all tagged up, all the birds are in the back and we'll take them into the processor and drop them off. The birds are all bagged up, nice, neat and legal and frozen. Uh, so it makes it really easy for the guys to take them home when they leave. Evidently, uh, having a commercial bird processor is is fairly unique to Arkansas. I'm not sure that there's anywhere else that you can have that done. If there is, let me know. I'd like to hear about it. But I know lots of guys come hunting with us from all over the place and they just can't believe it that uh, you can take them and drop them off and pay a few bucks and, and uh, get your birds processed. So it's something that I've done all my life. I mean, you know, probably one of the very first times I went duck hunting, uh, a buddy of mine, you know, Took, we took our birds to the processor, dropped them off and everything, and so it's a, it's a nice convenience to have. Duck season in Arkansas can be the greatest time of the year, but it's also the most exhausting time of year for me and for guys like me that go hunting every day or guides that take people duck hunting every single day. It's so exhausting, the amount of work, um, the, the long days and all of that. Um, it really takes a toll on the body and that's why I named uh, our channel surviving duck season because that's really kind of what we feel like sometimes uh, is that we're just we're surviving we're trying to get through it what I'm planning on doing for the next several weeks during duck season here in Arkansas I'm gonna be kind of showing you guys more about what I do not just the hunts but kind of what it takes uh, you know, for us to make it through the day and for us to survive duck season. Uh, if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments below and uh, make sure that you check out some of our other content. Uh, some right here are some tips and tactics and here's some of our feature episodes as part of our docu-series. You don't wanna miss those either. Until next time, I'm Joel Strickland. Good hunting and God bless.